In this video, I'm going to look at using file names in Shareable Service Management. File names are a function that sort of act like variables pointing to temporary files on the client system. These are useful for running a report and saves that to a PDF, but in the next step, you want to email that report. So you can use a file name to create a temporary file uh, out of the run report one step and then attach that to the send email one step. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So I'm going to go into my blue pill, my client system. Here I'm looking at the incident table. I'm going to go to one step and one step manager and I've created a little reports folder and I've got my simple run report one step. So I'll go ahead and edit that. And here you can see I've got two steps, one to run the report and one to send the email. So let's look at the run report step first. So here I'm going to run the staff workloads report using the report criteria, so I'm not going to do any kind of custom searching for this. Now the default option is to print to the default printer, which is all well and good, but today I want to write to a file. And here's the format, PDF. I can, I can uh, uh, export to a whole bunch of formats here, but I'm going to stick with PDF. And here I can browse for a file, I can enter a file name, but if you right click on this field, you'll get your uh, Sharewell Service Management uh, selector. So I can access all of my objects, all of my expressions, stored values, etc. But I can also access file names. So I'm going to drop that down and choose New File Name. And in the File Name Properties box, I'll give it a name and I'll call this my Staff Workload Report. And I'll leave the file name includes a full path checked. That looks nice. It goes into my uh, temp folder here. Delete file after one step process is complete. We'll do just that. I'm going to uncheck that because I'll let it hang around for a while. And then I can also use a custom extension. I know this is a PDF, so I'll go ahead and do that. And you'll notice that in the sample, the expression changed, or the extension changed, excuse me. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And here I have a token in the, in the gray bar here that says Staff Workload Report. So I'll go ahead and click OK. So what that will do is run a report, save it to PDF into that temp file. But what if I want to access that temp file in another step, for instance, to send this email? So I'll go ahead and edit that. What I, I've already got this email set up. It's presenting a report. I just need to create the attachment. So I'll go up here to the uh, Add Attachments to Message dropdown. And I have these options. I can browse for a file. I can go to the Attachment Manager. Custom allows me to do similar things. I can build an expression uh, or a file name to get to it. If I know that a file exists, then I want to do that. But in this case, what I'm going to do is drop this down and go to File Name and choose the file name that I created earlier in this one step, Staff Workload Report. I'll select that, and it's going to insert that link to that uh, temporary file and I should be all set. So I'll click OK and OK. Next, what I want to do is run the one step and see what happens. When I run the report, it'll prompt me to select a start date. So I'll take this back to June. End date will be today. And I'll click OK. And here I've got a new message. Let's have a look. And there's my staff workload report email. Here's a report. And there is my attachment. And you'll see it's given it a random temporary file name and uh, named it .pdf. And so if I open that up, here it is, my staff workloads report. So what I've successfully done is generated the report, saved it as a PDF, then attached it to an email, and sent it. And then you can automate that one step through a uh, scheduled task or through some other means that uh, you, know, you might want to have a regular report run weekly or daily and email to somebody, and this is how you can do it. Run the report, create a file name to save it to a PDF, then attach that file name to an email one step. Thank you.